Tim Russert is NBC's Washington Bureau Chief and, of course, moderator of Meet the Press. Hey, Tim, good morning. Good morning, Matt. You've spent a lot of time on the trail. We've, we've all been to these campaign appearances in places like Iowa, New Hampshire, where a candidate, no matter how popular, shows up at a dining hall or a club and they address 50, 100, 150 people at a time. Here you've got Oprah Winfrey pulling 30,000 people into a stadium in South Carolina. How does this change the dynamics of the race? Well, it's unique, Matt, because what happened at that event, it took on the form of almost a revival meeting. Everybody there was asked to text mes message their phone number to the Obama campaign. Then they were asked to find four more people to send them an email to get involved in the o Obama campaign. Why is this so critical in South Carolina? If Iowa and New Hampshire happen to go to Obama, in South Carolina, 50% of the voters are African-American. That's who were primarily were at that stadium yesterday. This could be a very significant event if Obama gets traction and momentum. And in Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina, look at the crowds Oprah was drawing. Look at, at the people in the crowd. A lot of women in that crowd, too. You've got Hillary Clinton trying to become the first woman president in this country. So when women are trying to decide here, how does Oprah influence that voting block? We don't know, but it could be significant. Just look at the turnout, Matt. Oprah transcends celebrity. She has a way of communicating and resonating with people. That's why you saw Hillary Clinton. Who did she bring on the campaign trail? Her daughter and her mother. Hillary Clinton's campaign knows that she's perceived as tough enough, but now she has to portray herself as a mother and as a daughter. Fill out the narrative that she's a complete person. It was all on stage this weekend in Iowa. All right, and if we look at the, at the poll numbers quickly for Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina between Clinton and Obama and John Edwards, we see that the numbers are still very close. Is it time, by the way, we, we drop that presumptive front-runner label from Hillary Clinton? Absolutely, in Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. This is a jump ball. This is a tied race. This is up for grabs, whatever word you want to use. And, and now let's look over at the Republican side of things, and let's put the same graphics up for these states, Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. And we see Mike Huckabee continuing his surge to the top, Tim. Compare or contrast this, this surge for me, to someone, something in the past. It's probably closest to Howard Dean in 2004, Matt, someone who just has been launched like a meteor. Can he hold on now for the next 24 days? But if Huckabee can pull away from Mitt Romney in Iowa, what happens to Romney in New Hampshire, where Rudy Giuliani is in second place and John McCain is running a strong campaign? And then what happens in South Carolina? Giuliani trying to hold on until February till Florida. I have never seen two primary races so volatile, so undecided at this stage of the race. Now, you had uh, Rudy Giuliani on your program yesterday. I was reading some of the newspaper accounts this morning, Tim, and, and most of them said he was on quite the hot seat. You talked to him about his personal life, about some of the decisions he's made, he made as mayor. How do you think he acquitted himself? Well, Matt, I think it's important that when you elect the president, you know what they've done in the past. And I think Rudy Giuliani's business associates, his judgments made as mayor, uh, involving security details and a whole lot of things are important. I think the mayor hung in there. He tried to respond and explain his position the best he can, but I don't think these issues are going to go away. So they're not behind him? No, sir. All right. Tim Russert in Washington this morning. Tim, thanks very much. Thanks, Matt.